crowd. Hello, lovely CAWC ladies. Welcome to today's Quarantine Tuesday. And we are doing a cooking club today with uh, myself, Dahlia, and Letty is with me. Here and today's sous chef. Yes, my sous chef today. Um, we are going to be learning how to do sushi and onigiri. We're not doing it the chef way. We're doing it the easy homemaker way. The woman at home making sushi, not the the not the, the chef in a sushi restaurant way. So in Japan, sushi is not a common dish. It's not something that families make on a regular basis. It's a special occasion dish because it's very finicky and it takes a lot of uh, preparation. It takes a lot of work to do sushi. So they leave it for the, the sushi chefs and going out for sushi, mm -hmm. or they leave it for special occasions where they make sushi. It's not like an everyday thing. However, onigiri is an everyday thing. And onigiri is a Japanese rice sandwich. So uh, in all the convenience stores, and in Japan they call them konbinis, mm -hmm. uh, in all the convenience stores, they have these um, onigiris and they've got them with um, salmon in them, flake salmon, they've got tuna mayo in them, then they've got some other weird and wonderful things that I always stayed away from. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> I could read uh, in hiragana, I can read uh, tuna uh, in katakana, I could read tuna, I could read um, salmon, uh, where they call uh, shake, um, shake or salmon. I could read it. And those are the two that I would buy from the shop. I stayed away from uh, the eels and the other uh, the things. I didn't even know what to do. I didn't even try them. So, um, but it's very common. People go into the konbini. It was under a, 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 about 100 yen, which is less than a pound. Really? And, and that would be sandwich. So you'd get one or two onigiris and a, and a, and a water or something. And that's your lunch on the go. Um, but people also make them at home and they do very cute little ones for, for their kids at school and they make very cute ones. So if you look on, on Amazon or anything for Japanese rice molds, you'll get ones that are uh, pandas. Um, I've got a panda set that I make for the kids. Um, can you make like fish? Yes, you can, you can make fish ones. Um, there's a, there's a, another teddy bear one. Uh, this this one on my kids' favorite is the train, the bullet train, the shinkansen one. Mm -hmm. So you can make it in the in the shape of a shinkansen, and it's even got it's even got molds to cut out the the nori, the oni, the 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 seaweed. Ah. So that you could actually make the, you can actually put the, the seaweed on the side of the train and you can, you can do windows and stuff like that. And there's, uh, you can make the pandas as well. You, they've got a cutter to make the, um, so where is my, um, can you do this also like for pastry to make biscuits? Yeah, you could, yeah. you could, but uh, yeah. the difference, the difference is the, of these ones is they've got a front and a back. Ah. So they've got a front and a back so you can squish the rice in and, and, and make it as a mold. Uh, yeah, so here's, this, here's the front of it. Mm -hmm. um, and here's the back of it. So maybe we'll make, we'll make, oh, one, we'll make one teddy bear on a giri as well as the normal. Uh, and what do you say? These are the cutters. Yes, oh. those are cut. And then here is the... Here's a mold for oh, mold to, to mold to make a penguin. Um, yeah, so you can the Japanese people make all cute little animals on gearies for their children for um, for school lunches. Well, this is a revelation. What about all the other ones? Yes, airplanes. And airplanes. Um, well, this is a revelation for me. Something to learn. Yeah. So, but we're gonna do the main the the adult ones. The normal onigiris today. Mm. Uh, yeah. This is like a little 
I know it's not a Mickey Mouse, but it looks like Mickey Mouse. Uh, yeah. I'm also, it's a panda. What am I saying? It's a panda. Yes. Um, I actually saw that I've got some nigiri molds as well. So you know what nigiri are? Nigiri are um, the little square pieces of rice and then you put like the salmon, the smoked salmon on top or the fish or whatever on top. And then you put uh, a tiny bit of, uh, you could possibly just like that, or you could put like a little tiny strip of onigiri on top of that as well. So maybe we'll make some, yeah. some uh, nigiri, yeah, there's a, a picture of what nigiris look like with nigiri. salmon and uh, and um, don't really and I really and love those ones. Things like that. So we can make we can we can make some of those as well today. Um, but yeah, so I've got a collection of molds. Yeah. But you don't need to have such a big collection. You can just get the ones that you want. Very cheap. A couple of dot a couple of pounds on Amazon. Excuse me. Um, can you get this? On Amazon. 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 There you are. Uh, yes. I when, I, um, when I did my post on Facebook uh, uh, about a month ago, I actually put the pictures of the Amazon. Oh, yeah, okay. you just have to search for onigiri molds or sushi molds and, it, and they come up. Oh, yes, Daniela is waiting. And she's going to connect with us. Yeah, I'm going okay. to take a picture of the yeah. various molds. Yes. And you can, you can buy them all. I've seen them all on um, on Amazon. So you don't have to... I have the box. Yep, the box. Because. I think I got that on Amazon. Letty, uh, are you going to take some photos? And can you send them to me, please? Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm already taking some. Thank you. Um, so yeah, so you can get it all on um, on Amazon, and uh, it's very easy. Because when I first came here, I used to go to the Japanese store in town, the rice wine store. In um, it's near Piccadilly Circus there, um, and I used to go there to buy onigiri and stuff like that. And there's another Japanese store in in Westfields, um, and it's called Ichi. Or itchy, itchy bar or something, and um, I used to go there. But now, since COVID, you think, oh, maybe I can find it on Amazon, and you can. So, okay. So to start with, the the most important thing about any of this is the rice. The rice. So yes, can you just explain that yes, instead okay. of using these molds, which is that the majority of the small, this is very difficult to put them the seaweed yes teeth and then whatever and then eventually you have to be rolling rolling very very careful so our clever dahlia just came with molds yes that you can buy on amazon so we have to forget about these ones yes. which are traditional but very yes. finicky we we'll leave those to the sushi chefs uh when you go to sushi train and wherever else you go to get your sushi um but at home uh, even in japan at home the woman use molds for making their onigiris and their sushis. It's okay. much easier. This is also a sushi. I've never tried this one. Why don't we try it today? <laughs> Why not? So apparently <laughs> you like pack your 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 rice in here and then you feed the 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 nori roll through there and then you shake it. Oh. And then it shakes it and it goes round. I've never tried, I've, been just, I've had this for oh. like four years, I've never tried. So, so, so maybe at the end, if we've got some leftover rice, we'll give this one a go. Oh. I've always been a bit scared to give this one a go. Okay, so the most important thing is the rice. Sushi rice, you can just go to your normal grocery store and you can find in the international section, the Japanese section, you can find sushi rice. However, that is like very generic, generic sushi rice. Mm. Um, if you really want the Japanese sushi experience, you want to get proper Japanese rice. Um, I'm a little bit of a rice snob because I lived in Japan for five years. People that have lived in Japan will get it. People that haven't won't. But my favorite rice is a rice called Koshi Hikari rice. It just has the, the, the correct amount of stickiness, 
Uh, it's 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 a it's a superior rice. It's very expensive. I think for a bag this size, I think you're looking five kilos. Five kilos I think you're looking at about 30, 40 pounds. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I'm not sure, but we we get this. I used to go all the way to the Japanese stores to buy it and then lug it home in packets. But now I go to trusty Amazon <laughs> and I type in kosher curry rice and and it comes. I might so, take a picture of yes, it. Yes, so this is. Uh, I don't think there's any everything. No, but I think we can do. Dahlia, can you spell that for me? Dahlia, yeah. yes. can you spell it? K. Ho shi hi curry. So K O S H. Uh, ho shi curry. Let me write that type it down so I can um, so I can get it right. Uh, you can send the Amazon link. On yeah. The yeah. Ho shi. Yeah, okay. Koshi Hikari. K O S H I H I K A R I. Koshi Hikari. Koshi Hikari rice, and um, it's a specific strain of Japanese rice. I don't know, but it's it's our favorite. Um, so, yeah. So, I'm not going to teach you how to uh, make the rice because that depends on the rice that you've got. Um, the best purchase I've ever made and everybody that lives in Japan and everybody that's ever lived in Japan all have Japanese rice cookers. So I had my Japanese rice cooker in Japan and I especially went to this one specific store that you go to when you leave Japan and you go buy, you go and buy a Japanese rice cooker made for foreign currents, ah. foreign voltages. So that was our, our main purchase when we left Japan. That and the Japanese toilet seats made for cut for foreign voltages. Fun. So if you don't know anything about a Japanese uh, toilet seat, you can. Um, you're missing that you're, gravy. You're missing it, missing out. So we've got one installed downstairs here. So if you ever want to come and try it out, <laughs> be my guest. So yes. So uh, just follow the instructions on the on the packet of your rice. So if you've got sushi rice. It will say take X amount grams of rice, X amount of water, cook it on the stove for X amount of time. I think it's 18 to 20 minutes. Um, so if you cook the rice, then uh, yeah, you make it about 18 to 20 minutes before you're about to um, ready to make your, your onigiri or your sushi. So I did mine a little bit earlier. My rice says it's got eight minutes left. Um, and then I can show you the, uh, you know, how to, how to actually make it. So that is uh, sushi rice. I'm just going to put this over here. Okay. So um, once your sushi rice is cooking, then you get everything you want to um, put in your onigiri and make your onigiri. So we have uh, pre-cut up some, some eva into slices. And we have cut up some celery and um, I've, grated, I've grated some carrots into julienne. Yeah, but they're uh, thinner than julienne. Um, and I've done the same with some cucumber because that's really nice. Um, okay, so what I'm gonna do is I uh, get this, um, you can get flavored ones uh, from Waitrose or, or Marks and Spencer's the poached salmon fillets. So they're already cooked, um, they're poached, and there's one with flavors, there's one with uh, lemon and herb, and one with chili. So you can get whatever flavor you like, or plain. I get the plain one for, because my son loves them um, for, for lunch. So I'm going to just uh, take some of the, yeah, some of the fish, and I'm gonna pop it into a bowl. I'm just going to flake it in. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Flake it into a bowl. I'm just going to take off the skin of the skin. I'm just going to take the skin off. Uh oh, it's so, yeah, so yeah, so right. fresh that it's just coming out of, yeah. of it on its own. Yep. I think so. Yeah, yeah. Let's get it up a little bit. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. I'll probably just do this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so I'm just going to flake it. So. You have a choice. You can um, just have it as flakes in your onigiri, or you can add um, mayonnaise. 
and, and make it like a salmon mayonnaise. It's totally personal preference. What I'll do is I will do a few uh, just with the flakes and then I will add some mayo and I'll do a few with uh, mayo in it. So that's one of the ingredients that we can make for our onigiri. Um, you can season it if you want with any spices that you like in your salmon. It's completely, it's a sandwich. So basically it's the same as making sandwiches. You can make with whatever ingredients you like to make. Um, so that's uh, salmon. And then I've got some tuna. So this is over the pan. Uh, yeah, well, this is a tuna. Yeah, just a ton of tuna. So, um, ah, yeah, just, just John yes. West tuna. Yes. And I'm going to do the same thing in another bowl. I'm going to flake it, but I'm going to add mayonnaise straight away because plain tuna is so not that exciting. Yeah. Uh, a little bit dry and a little bit um, stronger. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. 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 Stronger. But that's also a much fattier fish. Yes. I can so go. you don't actually need the um, the mayonnaise. It's because mm, it's and it's male. Yeah. Oh, it's it's amazing. So, um, yeah, so I've just put a, a ton of tuna in. You can see it's much drier when you yes. mash it up. So, normally there's a, a brand in Japan called QP. It is available here, QP. But um, I, and that's normally the mayonnaise that I buy, but I haven't bought recently, and this is all that I found in. Um, How do you take screenshots? Um, I think it's, um, maybe maybe Daniela, do you know? I think it's a shift, command, and three. Try that. Shift, command, and three. Does that work? Are you, are you on your phone or on your desktop? It's a laptop. Oh, on your laptop, okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm, not sure. I, I, I'm, I'm taking I'm taking some on my phone, so don't worry. Uh, All right, yeah, you, you do it then, Daniel, because I, I just can't see how to do it. Okay, I'll leave it to you. Yeah. On, on, on a MacBook, you, you press Shift, Command, and 3, and that takes a whole screen shot. Okay, so anyway, so I couldn't get, I haven't, I didn't find a QP mayonnaise, and I didn't have time to order it on Amazon, so I just got this uh, Japanese mayonnaise from, um, from Waitrose this morning. Mm. Um, so yes, I'm going to use that because I Germany have to say that your Waitrose here in this area yeah. is far more fancy than the one we brought in your restaurant. Really? I don't see any of this. Well, you, I'm sure you've got a Japanese section. Mm -hmm. You just gotta look. I will have to look. Yes, once you know about it, then you, you look. Okay, okay, so I'm going to just make it's a Japanese mayo is just like a different consistency. It's Excuse I know me, I'm going to cross. I'm just have to try. Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah, turn it over. Turn it yeah. over. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, there we go. Because I'm frightened that you might just come a lot. Oh. <laughs> right. Mm, yeah. yeah, it's great. Yes, it's so the QB I'm one is my favorite. Hands, eh? <laughs> the QB one is uh, is my favorite. So there. So I've just got some some tuna mayo there, which is a uh, which is also a great filling for your sandwiches. So some people actually like sushi with tuna mayo, and then you put avo with it and cucumber, and that's a nice thing for kids, especially. Uh, that's the kind of sushi that kids like, not the raw fish ones. Um, you know, my kids grew up eating sushi, so they they they've grown out of it, but they used to eat. Um, sashimi, yeah. raw fish, as like one-year-olds, they'd be grabbing it out of my hand yeah. and eating it. But then when I, when I fell pregnant and I wasn't allowed to eat the raw fish, my children were certainly not allowed to eat the raw fish. So yeah, so they've grown out of, um, of, of eating it because mm. now they think it's gross because they're teenagers still, yeah. Mm. So, okay, so that's tuna and salmon. And then I've got some smoked salmon as well, which uh, if we make some, um, if we make some nigiris, which are the little uh, rice squares, 
um, little rice squares with uh, fish over it. If we make some nigiris, then we can use this, and we can also use this in the, in the actual sushi as well if we want. Because they um, seem to be already cut. Yes, way. these are cut pieces. Of, mm -hmm. uh, this, this is my favorite from Costco. Mm -hmm. Uh, is this Norwegian? Uh, yes, it is Norwegian. Norwegian uh, smoked salmon. This is amazing. So yes, amazing. Yes, nice. yes. So amazing. I get that from Costco. And this actually comes with um, with a lovely dill sauce on oh. it. That is the best. There's my, my main purchase when I go to Costco is that. Okay, so we've got everything. We've got veggies, we've got salmon, we've got tuna, we've got smoked salmon. Um, and then obviously we've got uh, nori roll. Also, I get um, this clear spring is organic. It's fantastic. Um, and they, this is the brand that they have at my way shows. Yes, that I have in, in right, right. And also what this um, I get from Costco, it's the, the little uh, seaweed, roasted uh, seaweed. My kids have this for snacks every day at school. This goes in their lunchbox. But I find this size is perfect for the, for the onigiri. Whereas this one, the, these are good for the, um, the, the, the sushi. Right, so I don't know if you heard, but my, um, my rice maker just went bing, bing, bing. So um, that's my rice maker just told me that the rice is ready. So what's important to do when you're making the rice? Okay, so this is the most important part. Uh, you need sushi rice or seasoning for sushi rice, sushi rice vinegar. If you don't have sushi rice vinegar, you can make it with um, white vinegar and uh, sugar and you boil it you can find recipes on on the internet so you uh, just put your vinegar and your sugar in and you you heat it up until it's all mixed in so mm. basically sushi vinegar is sweet vinegar my kids call it uh, sweet rice and sometimes that's all they have they're like oh can i have sweet rice for dinner and then they have sushi rice for dinner Okay, so um, it's very important when you're making the onigiri is the, uh, or any rice for sushi, is getting the temperature and the, the rice and the temperature and the vinegar correct. Mm -hmm. So what you need to do is make it in a, a separate bowl. Uh, let me get, traditionally the Japanese, Traditionally, the Japanese make it in a bamboo, a bamboo bowl, and um, and then you have a rice paddle. Um, you have a rice paddle, mm -hmm. and uh, this is very good for folding in the, the the sushi the sushi vinegar into the rice and and getting it all over. Okay, so I will. Spoon out some rice. Do you want me to take this out of the Okay. Okay, so very hot rice. It's just been made. So I'm going to spoon out some. We're going to do it in sections. Okay, so you're going to spoon out some rice. Uh, keep it. Mm. Okay, so you're going to spoon out some rice. It's very hot. You want to cool it down a little bit before you put the, the sushi vinegar in. So, cool it down a little bit. Yes. The Japanese yes. always yes. sit with their fans. Yes, yes. exactly. And they fan the, the rice to cool it down. So it mustn't be cold, cold rice, but it mustn't be the boiling hot rice straight out of the pot. And this, can I just take yes. advantage? Yes. This is not an ordinary paddle. It has little, uh, I don't know what it is, like nodules on like little bumps, spikes at both sides. You see, and it's curved this way. Yeah, it, they, they're really fantastic. Also, very cheap. You can get them on, um, on Amazon. Amazon. You can get everything on Amazon. Okay, so I've let the rice cool down a little bit and it's very sticky. Mm -hmm. So when you put in the, um, the vinegar, it makes it a little bit less sticky. So if you put too much vinegar in, the rice is going to separate. Mm -hmm. So you need to put um, a small amount of 
of uh, vinegar in. You may have to put a little bit more in, but then you, you'll actually feel how it coats the rice because the rice becomes less sticky and separates a bit, but you don't want the rice to be not sticky at all. Because that's that, the whole thing that about sushi. Was yeah. like a teaspoon. Yeah. I pay attention. Yeah, yeah. So you know, you may have to put more in, but no, I think I think that's that's good. Because you want to you want to keep your rice still a little bit sticky. You know, if it separates, then your whole onigiri is going to fall apart. Right. So I think first of all, our first round, I think we'll make um, some onigiri. Okay. So your molds. Rice doesn't stick so much to water, so you want to just rinse. You want to just rinse the uh, the mold so that uh, the rice doesn't that, stick to it. Yep, and I'm going to get a spoon and I'm going to fill them up. Yep, fill up the bottom, just the like the bottom third. Why do you consider it? Yeah, bottom third of rice and press it down and I'm going to do the second one I'm going to press it down okay now you're going to put your fillings in mm. so let's do uh, we're not going to do the other no. that's for the sushi we're going to do first I'm going to do one of um, salmon. salmon so just a tiny little a bit of salmon in the middle of the sandwich, right in the middle of the triangle. Uh, right. Oh, I was going to do tuna on that one anyway. Mm. We'll make two salmon ones, but you get the gist. It's the same as tuna. <laughs> okay. Okay, so we put salmon in the middle. And then we fill it up with rice on top. See, it's real, the rice is sticking to my spoon, so I'm going to rinse off my spoon. I don't want the rice to stick to the spoon, but we do want the rice to still be sticky. Mm. It's a fine balance. So these are practice. Yes. You know, you've got to practice. You'll put in too much. Uh, you'll put too yeah. much vinegar in, and then add more rice in, and. You'll just practice. I mean, sometimes I make them and the rice, the, the whole sandwich falls apart and my kids scream at me because they, they pick up their onigiri and it goes everywhere and then they're very angry with me. But sometimes I get it right. And then mommy's good because I've made them their favorite mm. onigiri. But these seem to be that like they're gonna work out nicely. So I'm gonna take the lid and I'm going to rinse the lid as well so that the rice doesn't stick to the lid. I'm then going to put it in and I'm going to push it down all the way. So it's compressing everything. It's making them all nice and compressed so that they don't fall apart. And then I'm going to take the, the, lid. the lid off. Okay, so you can see there it's all compressed nice down together. And let's get a plate. And I'm going to take the, the onigiri and I'm going to kind of slap it down on the plate. And then if you can see there, there's like little pressy studs there. So you, you kind of push down. You push down on those to push down on a giri. And then holding thumbs, you pick it up and, then voila. <laughs> and it's all white. So yeah, yeah, there we go. So there you can see. So now the- Anita is clapping. <laughs> <laughs> right, so these have worked and they are sticky. I'm going to use these uh, little, uh, roasted seaweed from Costco. Okay, I'm going to open them, and this is our first, um, our first thing we've made. And these are onigiri, so you can make them. As I was saying earlier, you can make them in any shapes. Uh, you can make them as a train. You can make them as a um, penguin, mm -hmm. a little teddy bear. You can make any whatever your a panda. a panda, you can make them whatever your uh, imagination be. And here we go. And then you put the, the little onigiri, uh, the little nori roll, the little thing just underneath it. And if you look at your phone and type in onigiri, uh, this is what the emoji looks like, a little onigiri. 
So there we go. And, and there we go. And I think we'll, we'll do some more cooking and then we'll, we can do the taste testing afterwards. So, so there we go. There's your onigiri. You can put it down on the, on the side. I'm not going to, whoopsie, oops. There we I'm go. Make a picture and put okay. them outside. Okay, I'm just going to hold them like that. So that's your onigiri. Okay, do you want to take a picture of my wing? Take that and take a picture. Okay, so now um, I've got only a little bit of rice left. It's not enough to make a, a sushi uh, before I, I do the whole process again. So maybe what we can do is make some nigiri. Where's the nigiri molds? Yeah. So nigiri molds. Nigiri is a little bit of sushi. Um, and with some fish on. So what we can do is we can rinse it off like we do with all of them. Rinse it off. So that they be dumped and the yes. rice doesn't stick. But yes. the rice is still sticky. The rice is still sticky. Yes. This is actually a little bit too sticky. But it's good because once you've made the mess and you've made the onigiris, then it's uh, it's good. Okay. Right. So Looks like we've got enough rice here to make um, two. She's putting like nearly two teaspoons of rice in every little mold. Well, as much as the, the mold takes, oh, really. Um, yeah, so there we go. Because the more compact it is, the more it's going to stick together and um, the more solid it's going to be. Okay, so I'm rinsing the, I'm rinsing the, the top part of the mold. And I've managed to fill three with a little bit of rice I've had. Again, okay, you push down on the molds, getting them all sticky. Compressed. Yeah, all compressed. Right. So we're going to do the same thing. Do you need another plate? Yeah, I think let's get another plate. I've got a great assistant today. Okay. So again, we're going to dump it on there. We're going to pick it up. I didn't even have to. Um, do any pushing. Yeah, out. and then you've got three separate uh, on a giri, um, nigiri pieces nigiri. there. And because they sticky and compressed, they stick together. So I think what they traditionally do in, um, in Japanese sushi restaurants is they do a little dollop of, um, of wasabi. wasabi. It's a totally personal point, uh, personal thing. Some people like that kind of bite when they bite into a nigiri. Some people don't. Um, I know at my favorite sushi restaurant, uh, well, not restaurant, but like um, the diner. Was, yeah, yeah, the diner is you're, you're in, local. Yeah, in, uh, it was called Genki Sushi. And mm -hmm. they had these little robots that, um, that, that come and the train. The little robot, no, it's a little robot tray. So you do your order on the screen, and then your, your order comes on a little robot tray. You take it and you press a button, and the tray goes away. Anyway. They, you can order your nigiri with or without wasabi. So my compromise that I like to do actually is mix a little bit of onigiri and mayonnaise together and then it just kind of takes that bite away if you get the wasabi, yeah. wasabi and mayonnaise. Yes, so, okay. so you get like, a, you get a little bit of a bite but it's, it's, not, it's not so, no, it's so not, so strong, not so strong, yes, yes, yes. So um, there we go. I've just put a little bit of mayonnaise and wasabi together. And a fork. And a spoon. And I'm going to just mix them together. So. And it has become green. Yes. Little oh, wasabi, like wasabi mayonnaise. Okay, dokey. Okay, so I'm just going to put um, a little bit of this wasabi mayo. Um, on the top, just to give it a little bit of a flavor. Japanese bite. Then I'm going to use the the smoked salmon that I got from Costco. Sea sauce? Uh, have the sea no, sauce. I think this is just a to peel. peel of, but maybe sometimes there's yeah. so so tiny. Yeah, I've got oh. the scissors here. Do you want the scissors here? Sometimes it's just salt. Yeah, sometimes I actually just have to get it with a knife. Yeah, there, there you This are. is one of those times. There you are. Okay. Right. Oh, 
really a special tight part. Yes, tightly parted. And then, of course, they're so oily <laughs> that your fingers right. Okay. So here um, oh, is a lovely. slice of uh, salmon. I think that's a little bit big, yes. so I'm going to slice it in half. Okay, there we go. And, and I'm going to put the three. I like the idea of mixing the wasabi with the mayo. Just one. to take away yes. um, the bite. So nigiri is very, very thin pieces of, um, of, of fish, yes, to go over. They even slice the salmon, uh, the Japanese sushi, the sushi chefs slice it even thinner than, mm. than what is sliced there. And then uh, put it over onto the, the nigiri. So. They are we going to, and then you can take a picture of that. Uh, let me bring it back to yeah. so that. Okay. Very sticky. Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. That will be a, a big portion for one person or? Yes. Yeah. Mm. You see? Yeah. Okay. There you are. The light is. Right. Okay. So we're going to make more rice and then we're going to do some. Um, Sushis. Okay. So I'm going to get more rice into my bowl. More rice into my bowl. More, more rice into my bowl. I'm going to put more um, sushi rice vinegar. And I mean, it also kind of changes the flavor. It's a little bit sweet. Yes, it makes it really sweet. Yes, it's because the it's vinegar and sugar. So it does change. Yeah. It now I them. understand this is the difference between Chinese boiled rice, which yes. is really like just yes, and they use flavor. and they use a long grain rice. Yes, so sushi grain. rice is a short grain rice. And the, the Japanese, I mean, the, the Chinese rice is longer grain and not as sticky. It looks to me like the Italian for risotto. For risotto, yeah, yeah. yeah it does, a little bit like that. But mm -hmm. um, also, traditionally, how sushi actually came about is um, the vinegar in the rice was actually to keep um, the fish fresh or mm -hmm. kind of pickle the fish for workers to go out and work on the fields. So in the morning, they would make sushi and they wouldn't even really eat that much of the rice. It was the fish inside that they were pickling and preserving. So without refrigeration while they were on the field. And then it, uh, it developed into more of a, that you eat the whole thing. But traditionally it was the rice and the seaweed was actually the packaging of preserving their fish while they were working the fields all day. Um, so, and then, you know, it became like sandwiches, mm. the onigiri. Very much okay. like the Cornish pasta over here. Yes, yes. Yeah. And so, yeah, so that's what the, the purpose of the vinegar is, is actually to preserve the, or pickle, kind of like pickle the fish. Mm. Right, okay, so I've done it now again. So it's not as sticky as when it came out of the machine, but it's still sticky. Right, okay, and it, as you can see on my hands, it's all over my hands. Okay. Right. Okay, so now we're going to make, um, so you've got like the fat ones, the fat uh, sushi, the big ones, and the, and, the, and the thin rolls. I prefer the thin rolls um, because otherwise I kind of feel like there's so much rice and only like a little bit of, of whatever inside. So I kind of feel like the, the thin ones are, are a better ratio of rice to um, to whatever you're putting in it. So I'm going to rinse it, rinse the mold. We're going to spoon some rice to cover to cover the bottom. So as you can see, it's quite a finicky process and a long involved process, which is why 
it's not an everyday meal yeah. to make. Yeah. Uh, and this is sushi. true that it can be also forcing. I'm not, I don't yeah. have no idea. Because my Japanese friend said, it. you know, because it's precisely so involved that then you can get together with a neighbor or a friend or a family member, do it as a little party, and then, you know, take yeah, advantage. The sushi making party. Yeah. And then, then you obviously you will have some of the ones that you just made, but a few you can actually put them in the, in the fridge like a lot. And I did that, and um, then I forgot. And um, then a month later, I thought, oh, I found that. And obviously, I took them from the freezer, and yeah, yes. um, you know, within less than half an hour, they were really as fresh as. Really? Yeah. Oh, well, maybe we should. Hi, Daniela. Nice to see your face. Oh, yeah. Good to see you too. I'm going to have to jump off for a second because I think the car dealership is calling me about my car, but it won't go through because of the Zoom. Okay. So I'm going to jump off and see if it was them, but I'm excited. I was just in Waitrose and got this. Oh, so. <laughs> fantastic. Okay, we'll see you back in a few minutes. All right, I'll be back in hopefully a few minutes. Okay. Right, okay. So um, so I've done like the, the bottom half of, uh, of with rice, of the mold with rice. Okay, so now it's exciting. What are we going to put? Should we put um, tuna and avo? Should we put tuna yeah, and avo? Yeah. Okay. So we're going to do um, some, some strips of avo and we're going to put it all along. Now I understand why she asked me to cut Bridget them thin, thin slices and thin slices. It's just feeling right. all the lengths of yes. the mold. Now we're going to put some tuna. So the tuna mayo makes it a little bit um, moisture, you know, quite a bit of moisture. Um, we're going to put a little bit of tuna along. Is this also okay? Oh. Yeah, that is right. Right, so I put tuna, we put tuna and avocado pear. So avocado pear and then tuna. And now we're going to Fill the top with rice, 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 here's our rice, mm -hmm. okay, fill the top with rice, I'm so glad you're here, Letty, it would have been very oh, really lonely doing it all by myself, <laughs> but I'm really lo very lucky, I'm not only really glad, but very lucky because it really gives me the to, to, to try it at home. Yes, I love this food. Exactly. And um, I mean, normally it's me in the kitchen by myself mm. while my kids go off and they just arrive. Oh, Daniela's back. What? Oh, no. You are, you two are fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> well, we you should do it more often. <laughs> yeah, you're going to always be my sous chef. Next time we'll make bread. We'll make the oh, Jewish yes, bread. Yes, I want to do that. So we just don't tell my mother. Um, we just won't tell my mother that we're sharing her recipe because she'll no. get very upset. So no. we'll have to just be. Yeah, very I remember when I asked Dahlia for that. Then all of a sudden I couldn't remember your mom's name, yeah. Julia. Yeah. And then all of a sudden somebody Julia said, "Oh no, not yet." And I thought, "Who is this?" And then of course I realized it was yeah. I'm saying, "Don't not until I'm dead." Don't yeah, you're not allowed to know my, my color recipe until I'm dead. <laughs> okay, so I put the mold in, I'm squeezing it down. Uh, it, this runs, uh, I think, a, a little bit um, of a flow. Yeah, that's oh, fine. No, they just okay, so it comes, uh, it's uh, like that. Okay, so now, plate. Yeah, mm. okay, we can do a plate. Um, now's the time where we get the then roll. the nori roll, the seaweed. What do you see? Yeah, and again, let me have to open it. Let me open it. Okay, Daniela's coming back. Admit. Okay. Now look, they are really very delicate. Yeah. Okay. Okay. There you go. One. We're just going to take one. Okay. Welcome back, Daniela. So basically, you didn't miss much. Um, we put the, uh, the bottom third of rice, then we put um, a sliced avocado pear, and then we put um, the then we put the tuna mayonnaise, and then we put rice, and then I squeezed it together. 
Now we're going to put it onto this, the, the nori roll. We're going to take one nori roll out. That. Okay. Now you put, um, now we're going to put uh, the rough side goes towards the rice. Okay. And the clear side goes on the outside of the of the nori. So That's you've got to put it uh, smooth side down, rough side up. And then we're going to put that on top of that. No, towards the end. Uh -huh. And actually we will, uh, because this is a small one, we won't use all the, the nori. When you're rolling it, it kind of rolls in a spiral when you roll it with the with the bamboo stick. So you can use the whole sushi roll, uh, the whole nori roll, because it, it like gets incorporated into the the sushi. But when you've got the roll like this, it can't go inside. So you only need as much nori just to cover the outside. Yeah. So um, so actually, like a, I'm, I'm, I'm going to cut. This piece of I'm yeah. going to cut um, this in half because we won't need. We won't way. need the whole uh, nori for, for this one. For the bigger one, you just cut off like a third. Okay, so um, we've got the, the sushi roll. I'm going to put it over. On the edge. On the edge. I'm going to press down onto the little levers. And shake. shake it. There we go. Okay. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, just, just there we go. Yes. So it's uh, it's come off, it's come off onto the, the perfect roll onto the sushi, onto the nori, and then we're just going to roll the nori over and then at half. I'm going to blend the screen. I need to be down because half is perfect. Can I just? Yeah. Okay. There we go. Is it better, yeah. George? Okay. There we go. So, and half of it actually is perfect. It's just covered it. If I if I open this flap a little bit, you can see the rice. So. Cutting it for half for this for the thin one is perfect. So there you've got a beautiful um, perfectly rolled. sushi sushi roll. Right. Okay. So now the very difficult, very difficult part is, is cutting. So your knife has to be extremely sharp. So let's. You luckily, I've got uh, Japanese uh, global knives. Um, so I'm actually going to sharpen them just for the and you have you have to keep on wetting them again um i have tried that has worked well um in the past is also wrapping it in cling film and then cutting through the cling film because yeah. the cling film kind of keeps it together so this is a great knife sharpener i got in japan there's a fantastic in tokyo is a fantastic street. I forget the name now uh, because uh, it has been out of my mind for such a long time. But it's um, it's a street just of um, of like catering equipment shops mm -hmm. uh, and cooking shops and stuff like that. And all the 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 chefs and the the hotels and everything they buy all their catering equipment in the street and. Um, I'm sure if you if we Google it, we can find out the name of the street. Anyway, so I got this knife sharpener. It's got three different stones in it, in a, on a wheel, and uh, you you do the roughest one first seven times. You put water in it, so it's a wet stone, and you do it like that, and that gives it the roughest um, sharpen. Then you do the next one, which is much smoother. And you can see that's much smoother. You do that seven times. Yes. And then you do it on the finest one, and that makes your knife to really your fine. To, yes. And if I can give anybody a tip, if you want proper knives, Japanese global knives are the best. My husband came home with them, and they cost a fortune. And I shouted at him, and I said, how can you spend so much money on knives? But now I know, you know, some things that are, quality some place. things you just have to pay for the quality, you know, Japanese precision. Uh, we bought these, what, about six, seven years ago. 
We've got a great sharpener, and these are fantastic knives. They okay. work like new. Yes. yes. I'm yes. trying. I'm trying. trying. I'm <laughs> practicing already. Okay. Even though I don't have this beauty. Okay, so now the cutting is very important. So I'm going to rinse my knife so it doesn't get, um, stick okay. to the rice or the nori. Okay, and now we're going to... Um, even with a sharp knife, you could it still can be a total disaster when it comes to cutting the, the sushi. Um, so that's why sometimes if you if it's not working for you, then try with the um, with the wrapping it with the cling film very tightly and then cutting it. But this seems to be working pretty well. Mm. This um, is also already sharpened, just yeah. in case. So um, we must be careful. Yes. Yes. It, 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 she's doing beautifully. It's really cutting very nicely. I'm not going to do a video of this because. Right, so that is going up. Why not? Right, okay, so this is, we've now done a. Um, yeah, so I've cut them a little bit thicker so that they don't fall apart. Um, but there you go, some uh, sushi, I think these are makis, are these sushi makis, uh, sushi rolls. Um, this is normally the size when they just put one thing in it, like if you get an avocado maki or, um, or celery or cucumber or something like that. So the big ones are more for... Um, Which will be the one? Yeah, yeah. so we'll, we'll do one of those and then... Uh, then we'll see the difference. Yes, and I'll show you... Um, how we serve them and watch it with some some um, some soy sauce and some wasabi uh, and then we will sign off and Lexi and I will have lunch. We will <laughs> try that. You see? I'm lucky. Yes. Okay. So right, we're gonna put that plate over there and uh, we're going to make. So really good. Do you want me to rinse this? Yeah. yeah that's, okay. So yes, I'm gonna rinse that first. Um, Uh, we are going to get our rice. Okay, these are thick and big ones, uh, so we need more rice. I'm going to do the bottom third rice. And I need to rinse my spoon with your particular rice. Third, okay, so on third rice. Okay, now what do you want? What do you want to do in this one? Uh, what we, about again avocado, cucumber, and uh, the carrots to give a little bit of color? Okay, okay, and, and I just want to put some. Yeah, well, maybe should we put some mayonnaise with that? and for a change of that and because that is no mayonnaise and so maybe we'll put a little bit of yes, lovely, um, lovely mayonnaise because... okay so let's put avocado voila chef um okay thin piece of avocado um and another thin piece of avocado so let's maybe even cut that okay is oh, this is okay Mm, then just start with a piece of that. Uh, like this? Yeah, yeah this these one. Perfect, perfect. Okay, so we've got some avo in there. We're going to put some carrots. To give color and, and consistency. And we can put a bit of cucumber. We're just layering it on over there, and then we're going to put some salmon on top of that. And we're going to use that. Yes. Like, yeah, no, no, we'll no. do we'll put normal mayonnaise. Okay. Um, let me get a smaller bowl and just in case we. What I'll do is I'll. Um, yeah, so yeah, yes. like this? Yes. Or more? Uh, tiny bit more. And then I'll leave the rest of the salmon for when my kids come home. I'll make them on a gyri when they come home from school. They can have for dinner, for afternoon snack. Okay. Mm, special day for them. Uh, my oldest will be very, very happy. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I just put some of the Japanese uh, mayo. And uh, okay, now we're going to put the 
Simon Mayo. I'm wishing I was one of your children today, Dahlia. <laughs> well, you've got you you watching and you've got the ingredients, so you just need to get the molds from Amazon. I don't know if you need to organize that form. Um, right. Yeah, and you can do anything. I mean, you know, from from sushi shops, you can you can basically have anything. You, people have um, chicken mayo sushi. And, uh, Ellie, if I wanted to try today for lunch, and I don't have um, a mold for the little rice sandwiches, is there anything I can kind of you know use instead just for today? Well, yes. I mean, if you have something, if you have uh, any kind of mold for um something you can do it i mean you could um like if you got like a little sauce bowl a little ram ramekin or something i could i use that <laughs> yeah the ramekin. Ramekin, yeah but it, it'll be harder to get it out like if you have a uh, okay i have a bowl just like that at home yeah if you've got your little sauce bowls i would put, you put rice put your thing and then put rice and then i would uh, take yeah. like a yeah like a thin knife or something and and go it out and then kind of okay but, yeah show a bit so rin, uh, rinse with water so that the rice sticks to itself, but not to the bowl. Oh, mold. Uh, and then, um, you know, obviously it's easier with the mold. Yeah, yeah. So definitely you can, you, you can improvise. At least I can experiment a little bit later today. Yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, by the way, question, how yeah. much rice did you... I put with? in um, three cups of rice, okay. um, but not normal cups. Like the the rice cups of the of the rice uh, where, where the machine the rice the rice machine that came with the rice machine. So it's yeah. about the size. This isn't the one I used, but it's uh, about it. that's uh, a cup of rice. Uh, and actually, um, it says how much you hear is uh, hundred hundred grams, hundred and sixty. So that was sixty grams. What did I say? I think one hundred and sixty. One hundred and sixty grams. Uh, grams. Which comes to be like half a cup, a little bit, yeah, of like a normal cup. Yeah. yeah. So if you use the uh, baking measurements, then uh, half a cup of of rice. I use three of those. Um, and look, the amount of. Can I just have a quick look? Yeah. How much is left? Um, Would you press it? Yes, yes, yes. Press it. Oh yes, yeah, dear. Yeah. Oh yeah. There's plenty of rice left there. I did three of those cups um, because. Because my rice cooker actually keeps it warm for yes, you can even have up to like forty hours. Oh wow! Um, with with a rice warm, so we always every few days we actually make a rice and just leave it here. And then if I've got um, the salmon in the fridge, then my son will come home and say, "Oh, I want on a I want on a and then I'll make him on a giri. Um, we do Japanese rice bowls where we actually put rice and then we like you can do steak. You can do fish, you oh, can do chicken, steak, and, and then you cut it up. Like and a, you, you, like a bite. Yes, yes. So you put rice on, then you do your steak however you like it, mm -hmm. or you do a uh, chicken, you can do a uh, grilled chicken, or you can even do like chicken um, with a, in a batter or something. You cut it up and then you put it on top of the rice, and then you can have that with um, soy sauce, mm. or um, the QP do an amazing roasted sesame dressing, which you can get, of course, on Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the one from Japan. It's imported directly from Japan. It's a QP uh, roasted sesame dressing. Mm. However, my husband did find in Costco the other day, Huge bottle, a QP roasted sesame dressing, which is obviously made, same company, same product, but obviously made for the foreign market. Mm. I haven't tasted it yet, so I can't tell you if it's exactly the same. But when this bottle's finished, we will try it and I'll let you know. It, it looks, looks very similar. Yeah, it's the same company, it's yes. QP, and it's roasted sesame dressing. Um, From outside at the moment, they don't look the same because this bottle is like not totally transparent, but yes. this is really transparent. Uh, yeah. It's a little bit much. And the sesame look bigger. I don't know. Yeah. I, will, I will do a taste test. My, my husband is the, the connoisseur of QP Goma dressing. So um, he will, he will, I'll tell you his opinion. 
but that we often we often feed that to the, the kids and we have it and you just make rice bowls with whatever if it's meat or chicken or fish and uh, and that goma sauce is amazing okay so i've rinsed that out um i've pressed it on we're pressing it down okay yeah, yeah. We, oh, taking that off mm -hmm. taking that off and then you can see it's uh big and round mold okay yes you can move that out um this is also harder to cut can we have another nori sheet uh, please yes <laughs> yeah. And you have to be very careful because if you have your hands wet, yes. they get sticky. Yes. Okay. Um, right. So this, I'll, I won't cut it off yet. I'll roll it first and then I'll cut off the excess just to make sure. So remember, a shiny side on the outside, and the sticky rough. side towards, I mean, the, the rough side towards the rice. Okay. So we're going to put it on. And that came off very easily. Right, we're gonna we're gonna roll it. Uh, roll it. Okay. Oh. A bit messier. Yeah, we missed it. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna just cut off. Yeah. Okay, right. Okay, so again, um, if you if you feel like it needs to be squished a bit more, you can always wrap it with um, with cling film. Uh, cling film, yes, and you could even take the sushi mats. Um, yeah. the sushi mats. Uh, over the cling film and uh, and just kind of because these are very good. The reason why they use them is they're very good to actually compress compress them and squish them down. Um, so yes, I did learn originally to make sushi with the mats, um, but it's obviously so much easier to do it with the with the mold with the mold. Okay, so we're going to cut again. Um, I'm going to rinse the. The other knife also is already sharpened. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to rinse it. So the first one we're just going to cut. The other way. Um, that's like a messy one. See, this is falling apart. The first one, the first one is always yes. not the perfect one. Yes. Um, but again, the bigger one is much messier to work with. So I can't get all of them right. So maybe this one will be a bit of a disaster. But not everything can be perfect. Especially not for big audiences like CWC International. Yes, I mean a whole like 10 people could watch this maybe. Okay. Lovely, really lovely straight cuts. Well done, Daniel. <laughs> I thought you were going to use a like a chopping board, a chopping board for that instead of the plate. Oh, you could use a chopping board. Once you become a master, then you know. No. Okay, and then let's push it out. Okay, there we go. So those are the end pieces are a bit of a disaster, but the the middle pieces are pretty good. It all tastes the same. All tastes very delicious. So that's the big one. That's got the. Um, the salmon and uh, and some veggies in it. It'll be very delicious when we eat it. Okay, so how to serve? Then we get some. Um, if you want to make an impression, I'm going to get my Japanese serving dishes out. Ah. And it smells really lovely. This is a vinegar, it's a salmon, it's a Japanese mayonnaise. Mm, I'm really looking forward to it. Yes, okay. 
Sorry, girls, you're not here. <laughs> okay, so um, I'm going to just show you how to to serve. So if you want to make a pretty precious impression and you serve it up to some guests or, or hubby or something like that, uh, and you want to look professional. So these are nice square Japanese plates. Uh, morale, if you're watching, you know where I got these from. Uh, there's a fantastic store. Nobody knows what the name of it is in Japanese, but the, the foreigners call it the dirty dish store. And uh, there's always, all of the women's group do a yearly trip to dirty dish. And, and the reason why it's called dirty dish, because it's this big warehouse full of, full of uh, crockery. And, um, and, and they're all dusty and they have these huge shelves and, and aisles just full of dishes. And, um, and you go and you get these beautiful fives. I've got some amazing stuff from Dirty Dish. Anyway, okay, so you can take uh, some sushi pieces um, and you can arrange them on your, on your thing. I'm gonna put a uh, nigiri. I'm not going to put the onigiri because um, they, that's more of a sandwich. Triangle, this, yeah. this is more. This is more of uh, sushi. Um, so you can kind of display it on a square dish. Looks very nice. Presentation. Um, and we do have some soya. And yes, and then you can have a nice little as a matching sakura little bowl. You can. Uh, Pour some soy sauce. Uh, like that. Then we can put the soy sauce there. You can put a little bit of um, wasabi. In it. Mm -hmm. wasabi. I didn't know you could do that. Oh, boy. Yeah, you, that you can choose. Yes, 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 yes. And then you can, uh, you can the make person can mix it in. Make so not. I have, uh, I have some. Fantastic uh, chopsticks that I got in Japan. These are engraved with our names on in uh, in, in in katakana and also in English. They say Vicelus. Um, and yeah, and they've also got the little sakura trees in them, the sakura flowers. So when I have people over and I'm serving a Japanese meal. Um, this is what they get uh, for the sushi portion of it. Maybe another time I'll do some other Japanese dishes um, for if you want to have like a Japanese uh, themed evening, mm -hmm. but that could be a whole nother cooking group. So uh, thank you for watching. I hope you're going to try make some sushi and onigiri at home. We are going to, uh, we are going to eat lunch now and enjoy it but we won't torture you with it. So uh, we'll say goodbye and sign off. I will, um, I will put this, upload this onto YouTube for ladies to watch at another time. Who said something? Daniela said it was amazing. Thank you. Okay, fabulous. I hope uh, you're gonna make, take some pictures and show us Daniela. And, uh, yes. and, and yes, and then if anybody wants to ask me any questions, yes, I just, uh, just uh, yes, message me or whatever. I'm happy to answer any questions or anything like that. So uh, wonderful. Thank you, ladies. Bye-bye everyone. Okay, I'm going to stop recording. Stop recording.